Michigan taking on Texas. How about Tennessee, North Carolina State? Will Clemson bounce back here? And what does USC do, if anything, after the LSU debacle, or actually, shall I say, victory? And I know that. Because a few of us here on the show had USC as we welcome in Marco D'Angelo and Kelly Stewart here in this week's edition of the College Football Bet On It, powered by wagertalk.com. Let us dive in. I'm looking forward to hearing what you got to say about this one here, Cal, because I love this game. Number four, Texas, taking on number nine, Michigan. Something's got to give. Are you buying Michigan this year to repeat? What do you think? I'm not buying Michigan to repeat, but Michigan catching seven and a half at the big house. Are we really doing this? Look, I know Texas looked wonderful last week against Jay Norvell and a Colorado State team that gave me a giant trophy. I bet that one in July. 35 and a half. Didn't matter. Did not matter whatsoever. Quinn Ewers, give him the Heisman now. It's over. And then you've got on the flip side, Fresno State that I did give out 21 and a half. And Michigan needed a pick six to even have the back door open to cover that number. Fresno State had that team on the ropes. Maybe they were looking ahead. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they've got a lot of uh, press clippings, including a Netflix documentary that they've been watching. Getting a little weary about that national championship from last year, but seven and a half. I'm looking at the numbers that our good friend Ralph Michaels always shares with me over the summer. I like to make my own adjustments from them. And I made Texas a one-point favorite in this game. So then you got to ask, what the hell did I do wrong if the bookmakers are making this game so high? And I think I didn't. I think I'm crazy. I think this should be my best bet. But I'm not in love with this Michigan team. And that is my only concern here. I wish that I had something nice to say about this one-dimensional offense that I watched last week. But I'm hoping they just kept everything in their little playbook in order to make this game closer. It's on my long list, Joe, to make my parlay this week. Um, And it's a very long list. There's about eight teams that I still have to narrow down on this Wednesday evening. But if you're going to make me pick, I'm going to take Michigan over the touchdown at home. Yeah, it's uh, what a battle this is going to be. It's either going to be a feast or famine, some people think, with Michigan uh, this year. But, boy, that's a lot of points to give them at home here. Uh, Marco D'Angelo, another intriguing game coming up uh, this week is, boy, I I did not like what I saw from NC State uh, (laughs) last week by the (laughs) hair on their chinny-chin-tin. But, you know, Josh Heupel in Tennessee – They love to go up-tempo. They love to score. It's a pretty good NC defense. Uh, Tennessee, a touchdown and a half, I believe, seven and a half. So what gives in this one? Well, we got a battle of top 25s and Mm. got another primetime home dog. I can hear Kelly nipping (laughs) back in the background there. Do we have a primetime home dog? And normally I would buy it uh, and look to take uh, the home dog here, but – it's not exactly their home field. They're going to be playing this game uh, not at NC State, but actually at the Carolina Panthers uh, Stadium. And so I guess they wanted the fans to actually see a good game for a change. <laughs> so they, they gave them this one. Uh, Tennessee, yeah, they came in guns a-blazing last week, but that was against Chattanooga. And I'm going to give it one try. The Tennessee quarterback, Nico Iamalava from the rest of the season. It's just going to be Nico to me. He was tremendous uh, in a half of football last week. Uh, That's all they needed. Uh, 22 of 28, 314 yards, three touchdowns. They, you know, basically uh, called off the dogs. They still scored more in that uh, route of Tennessee Chattanooga, putting up uh, 69 uh, points last week. Uh, you know, Kelly, I'm sure she's going to chime in. I like that score, uh, them putting up 69 on the board mm-hmm. in that one. But mm-hmm. NC State, they had to struggle uh, to get the win, as you alluded to. Uh, 21 to um, 17, they were trailing heading to the fourth quarter. They put up 21 unanswered points to a win that game, a 38-21, but it was a struggle for them. They had to show a lot of their playbook, so to speak, to get the job done, whereas Tennessee had things wrapped up 
at halftime and was just starting to game plan for this one. Normally, I would look to take the underdog here, but this Tennessee team, I think they are for real. NC State quarterback, uh, Grayson McCall, we remember him from Coastal Carolina. Good quarterback when he stayed healthy uh, last week, 26 of 40 for 318. But that was the Western Carolina defense. Now he's got to step up and go against an SEC defense. Not that Tennessee is one of the powerhouses defensively. You're still talking about a major upgrade in talent. NC State, a uh, lot of uh, anticipation to this season. Hopes are high. They finished 5-1 and one over the last six games last year. But when you go back and look at that six-game stretch, yeah, wins over Clemson in Miami of Florida, those are always impressive wins on paper. But when you go back and look at those two teams from last year, was it really those uh, as impressive as they might have looked? I don't think so. And the two teams that they played where they had a more physical team, they played Notre Dame earlier in the season last year, and NC State just got steamrolled. And then a team that Kelly's very familiar with, when they played Kansas State in the bowl game, they got manhandled there as well. I think Tennessee is going to roll in this one. I think they put this one over the touchdown for a reason, to make those primetime dog lovers a little tempted mm. to grab it, but I'm not buying it. I'm going Tennessee. I'm laying it. I got Tennessee 38-24. Woo, should be a good one. Two primetime games that uh, are certainly going to be must-watch. Now it is time to bring in the pen. Mr. Ralph Michaels, I've got my number two pencil all sharpened here for you, Ralph. We've got TNA to go over. We learned a little something here, week zero, week one. Now we head into week two. So what are some of the trends and angles worth noting heading into uh, this weekend? Well, Joe, I just want to let you know, I caught a lot of crap in the offseason because bet on it viewers were saying, how come Ralph always has such a nice chart when he's on Wager Talk today and he gets to bet on it and he has no charts? Well, I'm going to give a few fewer trends each week this week, but I am going to take the time and I know you guys like visualizing those charts. So it is week number two. So let's look at the basics. How have teams done? off a win as a dog, how have teams done off a loss as a favorite, and how have totals in general done in game number two? So if we can see chart number one, first we're going to look at how college football teams do in game number two off a win as a dog. So these teams won their opener, their season opener, and if we take a look, Obviously, you're going to see the red means bad. All the games since 2018. Okay, let's take a look at how teams do off a loss as a favorite first. So these teams lost as a, as a favorite last week. Well, if you look and play on them game two, you're only 46.7%. If they lost at home as a favorite, they're 45.6%. If they lost as an away favorite, they're actually better. There's only two teams that lost as a home favorite last week. That is Rice and Texas A&M. Take a look on the red on the bottom, guys. Joe, if a team lost as a small favorite, you see the next week, they've gone 51.7%. Mm. But where you see the previous line was less than or equal minus eight, that represents teams that lost their season opener as a favorite of eight or more those teams have only gone 34.4%. And if the team lost as a favorite of eight or more and is now at home, like Rice is, those teams have gone eight and 24 against the spread, only 25% ATS since 2016. Kind of crazy here, Ralph. We got, uh, so we have a lot of different types of scenarios uh, heading into this week, too. Uh, crazy enough, since we've only had a couple of weeks under our belt here. What is another one of these charts and trends here that you're keeping an eye on? This one surprised me because a lot of times when you look at how teams do off a loss as a favorite, you think the opposite happens if a team would have won as a dog. But if we could see chart number two, these are college football teams in game number two that are off a win as a dog in week one. Take a look at the red on that Ooh. sheet. 
If you blindly faded every team that won their season opener as a dog, you have won 58% because those teams are only 42%. Teams off a win as a home dog, 41% against the spread. Teams off a win as an away dog, 41% against the spread. And I did break up how teams are now as a home favored, home dog, away favored, away dog. You see that there's none on the positive side. And there is a small sample size, but teams that won as a dog and are now a home dog have only gone 25% against the spread. And teams that won game one as a dog and now they're an away dog, only 31% against the spread. The teams that are now an away dog in that 31% role, Buffalo, Sam Houston State, and Eastern Michigan, and those teams that did um, lose that did win as a home dog and are now a home favorite, that is USC and Notre Dame. Now, Ralph, let's focus in on some totals here. We talked about some sides. What do the totals tell us uh, heading into week two here in college football? I get asked this all the time. You know, we talked about week one being a week of unders, but nobody knows what happens in week two. Is there a way you should be leaning with total bets? Well, let's just look at the data. It's not overwhelming, but there are a few points I want to bring up to you. These are looking at college football game totals since 2016. If you bet every game in college football, game number two, the over has gone 52.8%. You see the under there, 47.2. Doesn't really matter if they're a home favorite or a home dog. There's a few percent different, but not massive. But two things I wanted to point out to give you some actionable information from this chart. You know, I was listening to VR's gold segment. We talked about overreactions. When both teams went over last week, they are only 38 and 58 over under this week. That is 60.4% to the under. And if you have a very high total in game number two and both teams are FBS teams, take a look at that. 11 overs and 27 unders, that is 29% to the under or, excuse me, 29% to the over or 61, make that 71% to the under. That is a total of 65 or more with both teams being FBS foes. So some things to look for at college football game number two Teams off an upset win, an upset loss, or the over-unders. All right, always good stuff from Ralph Michaels and other TNA in the books here, week two of college football. But now it is time to figure out if we're going to get a sandwich or a trap here. Who are we fading in Joe Public? And, of course, the double-digit dog of the week. And, Kelly, you have got your eye on a double-digit dog this week, this is an interesting one. Tell us about Cal taking on Auburn. Almost as interesting as App State Clemson, which is what I was going to break down until I saw that Joe put it in the <laughs> script before I did. Uh, so there, there was there was three. In fairness, there were three. It was App State, Cal, and oh, South Carolina, which is no longer a double-digit dog. So in fairness, we got Cal by default. I do like this Cal team, though. If you guys remember, a couple times last year, we bet them on the money line. Once versus Auburn. Once versus USC. Both times they had the opportunity to win the game. They couldn't get it done. Now Cal's in the ACC, and they're having to go to Auburn, Alabama, to play the other side of this series. And I think this is too many points. Everybody loves to back an SEC team over a team like Cal. But this Cal team is special. That running back from last year who ran all over this team is now a senior. Could Cal put up enough points to run with Auburn? Probably not. But last year, if you remember, their defense held Auburn to just two touchdowns. I understand it looks ugly, and I'm going to break it down more on my Instagram channel later. But I had to pivot last minute. Uh, We'll see if Cal can't keep it close in Auburn and might get the outright win for us oh look at that maybe even a little sprinkle on the uh the money line you gotta uh you gotta love that cal and i also since you already let the cat out of the bag we might as well talk a little bit about fading 
Joe Public. And uh, Joe Public is expecting, without a doubt, a monster comeback from Clemson, who was uh, embarrassed, to say the least, against uh, Georgia last week. But I had no shame in losing to the number one team in the country. But the problem is... This is absolutely one of those uh, trap spots of sort that somebody like Marco D'Angelo would talk about here. There is no way and nothing that I saw, take George out of the picture, there's nothing that I saw from that Clemson offense that leads me to believe, especially after playing Georgia, that they are somehow going to flip a switch and offensively they are going to drop all sorts of points on one of the better uh, Appalachian State teams that we have seen. Listen, they're always going to be competitive. They can certainly score with the best of them. They're always going to be feisty. You got to think Clemson is licking its wounds here a little bit. And 17 and a half points? Absolutely not. I don't care that the game is in Clemson. I think this game is going to be much closer than Clemson fans and Clemson backers want to believe. I am going to take the 17, 17 and a half points here, and I'm going to fade Joe Public. You can have Clemson. I'll be taking the points with App State in this one. So, Marco, it's up to you, man. Is it a sandwich, uh, the deli open this week? What are we looking at here in college football? Well, Joe, being that we are taping uh, both the NFL show and the college show, and I haven't eaten yet, it's a sandwich because I got I'm hungry and it is week two. Uh, I'm ready to get the deli open. Uh, we had a, you know cleaning over the summer and ready to go. Got some blue plate specials, and we're gonna start this one off with, you know, if Kelly was hosting, she'd say, I don't know if I want to eat that sandwich, but you know, just enjoy it. Okay, this is a great spot for the first sandwich game of the week. Why? Well, we got an ugly team. Florida Atlantic, last week they played Friday night, okay? We know these, you know, Thursday night, Friday night games. Teams get up for them. There's generally only one or two games on the schedule, so they're getting all of the attention. And what they do? Well, they went to Michigan State and gave Michigan State a battle. Uh, big dog came up just short. I think Kelly enjoyed that game, if I remember correctly, is uh, she had the dog in that one. Now they return home. Anytime I see a big dog step up in class and almost pull off an upset, come home just short, and they're a favorite the next week, you know I'm going to be lining up to bet against them, but that's just part of the equation here. Enter Army coming in. Now, you've got Army coming in. This is a team that Florida Atlantic doesn't face triple option teams that often. Now they got to prepare for them. All right, that in itself is tough enough. And coming off that big game with the letdown, now you got to prepare for this game. Yeah, it's their home opener. They're going to get excited. But look at who they got on deck next week. Yeah, they got their in-state rival, Florida International. So you've got a team coming off playing up in class, Michigan State, coming home to play a team, Army, that you know will be focused, being a military academy and conference, you know, first conference game. Yeah, Army's in a conference and a triple option. When you've got your rival on deck, no way. I am lining up with Army. I think they'll be able to control this game Pound and ground is what we're going to see from Army. I don't see Florida Atlantic stopping this one. Time of possession will be all on the Army side. Give me those four points. I'll be honest, I don't think we need the points. I think they get the outright win. I'm going to call it Army 24 to 20. Perfect sandwich spot for week two of college football. I don't know if Kelly's going to get to the deli with me or is she going to complain about you know, she doesn't like eating that particular lunch meat, but take Army for our first sandwich game of the week. I don't know what to say. I know I'm not hosting anymore, but I feel like I need to interject here. <laughs> like, Marco, <laughs> what? Are, I get it. We, had, we got off to a late start. We had some tech issues today, none of which were my fault. I'll say that. And now you're being all feisty. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just wrote down sandwich game Army so that I can text all my friends because they yes. love your sandwich game of the week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank it's you. early yet here. We haven't even brought up Miami. Uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, anyway, 
<laughs> All right, week two, college football. Nothing like a little gold here to get it going here. Yanni the Greek, welcome in uh, VR. We learned a little something by a whole bunch of teams in week one. What are we doing in week two in college football? Week two is definitely one of the most advantageous for betters, both in college football and the NFL. And the reason I've been harping about it over and over again, I sound like a broken record, but it's true. We've only had one game played, and yet we've had six, seven days to talk about that and draw conclusions off that one outcome. And we talk about all the time when it comes to handicapping, you should never overreact to any one result. And yet that's exactly what happens this week. So these lines are littered with more recency bias than any other time during the season, I believe, which is why you will find incredible value. I'm unloading a big play come Saturday, but I've been very selective. I think I've only released one premium so far because I got buried in week one in college football. We had a ton of volume. I think I only came out like four games under 500, but you add in all that big and it starts to pile up. So the wise guys did not do well in week one. I think most of the sharp betters did not do all that well in week one. We'll see how it bounces back in week two. Here's what I can share so far. Not enough data to really form a deep analysis. So I'm just gonna share the the, the plays with you. As the season progresses, it'll be a lot easier confirming the reasoning behind it. So let's start off with 318. Florida Atlantic, minus three, minus three and a half. 329, Baylor, plus 15, Baylor, plus 14 and a half. 341, Iowa State. Now, they laid the VIG. They laid minus 125 to get plus three on Iowa State. Now, to go from two and a half to three is worth 16 cents. So, if you're paying more than $1.26 to get that plus three, you're better off taking the plus two and a half at minus 110. I know if it lands three, you're going to be kicking yourself and say, why didn't I spend that extra penny, that extra two cents on the dollar? But it isn't the better bet to make. It just makes you feel better, but deep down, you're making a worse bet. So if you can't let 20 minus 126 or better, just take the two and a half if you agree with me. And uh, finally, a couple more signs. 374, Arkansas State minus six and a half, and 389, Texas Tech minus one and a half. A couple totals I'll... uh, give out real quickly and keep in mind when you see that some of these lines that we hit didn't get the respect then you can kind of confirm that there was some manipulation taking part because you got to remember early on in the week the limits are lower and you could get the screen to move in the direction you like if you have an account that's labeled as sharp so when you see me come on thursday friday or even better saturday when i come on with kelly and you see that some of these moves the line didn't get respect And if sometimes it went the opposite way, then you can conclude that this may have been a setup. You know, again, you you could conclude it with a higher probability than not. And uh, Texas Tech's a perfect example of that, where you could get a better number now. I mean, they laid points on Texas Tech, and you could get plus points now on Texas Tech. So same thing happens with these totals, which are very much manipulated. Uh, 313, 314, Pittsburgh, Cincy, over 60 and a half. 321, 22, Arkansas, Oklahoma State, over 62 and a half. 31-32, 31-32, Carolina and Kentucky, under 42 and a half. Uh, 45-46, UTSA, Texas State, over 64. East Carolina, Old Dominion, over 55. Sam Houston, Central Florida, under 57 and a half. Liberty, New Mexico, under 56. And Mississippi State, Arizona State, over 60. As you can see, paper isn't very full this week. Even the the groups, they got buried last week, coming out a little bit slower and letting the public knock some of these lines out of whack because a lot of the recreational bettors did good last week. So they're coming in with a ton of confidence. So I'm seeing a lot of the sharp bettors sitting back waiting for some of these lines to possibly get knocked out of whack. So make sure you tune in on Saturday morning. We'll have the latest breaking information with Kelly. Uh, So that's going to do it for college football for this week. Again, whether you guys follow or fade, I hope you do damage and uh, keep grinding. It's a marathon, not a sprint, Yanni. That's uh, that's great advice as always, my man. All right, we'll see you again on Saturday for last call. All right, best bet time here (laughs) in college football week two on Bet On It. We'll start with your best bet here, Kelly, where uh, where might you be looking on the board to put a little money down on? 
Yeah, let's be honest. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this one, and that's rightfully so, and I, I probably deserve it. Uh, I'm going to take Illinois here, plus five. Yes, six was available. Yeah, I waited a little too long. It doesn't matter. I'm taking this play on the money line over the Kansas Jayhawks. Joe, what happened in the days when I could just have like a lazy handicap, like take the better defense plus the points with the home underdog? Because that's literally what I'm looking at here. This is an Illinois team who played in FCS school. I thought Kansas played a Division three school. I had to Google it last week. But do those games really matter? Sure, you get to work some of the kinks out, but I don't think it defines what this game looks like. Both teams never in danger of losing. They got to get some reps in. Second team's got to get some reps in. We'll see how this one plays out. But I like Illinois to keep this one close in Champaign over the Kansas Jayhawks that ESPN, for some reason, has ranked number 18. And uh, even though they were like 12 to 1 or 14 to 1 to win the Big 12, favored to win the Big 12 tournament, I get it. Lance Leopold is changing things in Lawrence. But he's not changing them that fast. The guy's not named Bill Snyder. Everybody pump the brakes. This Illinois team last year was trailing really badly, if you remember, uh, 21 and a half. And then what did KU do? Well, they had some balls not bounce their way, and mm. Illinois kind of brought it together. We'll leave it at that. This year, maybe we actually get some home cooking to go our way. Give me Illinois plus five with a sprinkle on the money line. Oh, taking the uh, the plus five with a little sprinkle on the ML there for Illinois. Marco, boy, you, you diving deep for this one here. This best <laughs> bet. Is this the other card? Like, what? where are you pulling out a best bet for us here this week? Well, Joe, I got a few things to say. First of all, you know it is officially football season. We've had a sandwich game. And we've had Kelly Bash in Kansas. So it is officially football season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and go back to last year and last week. We sucked last week, full disclosure, uh, with the show. But if you remember, and I hope history repeats itself again, we did that last year too. And then we rolled off 11 straight college best bets. And we usually found these off-the-wall games a lot of the times to bring us a win, and that's where I'm going this week. We're going to take a look at South Alabama, and I'm going to lay the small number on the road with them. And if you go back and look last week, they lost 52-38 to 38, uh, to North Texas. Misleading final score. They actually outgained North Texas 582 to 550. The problem in that game, South Alabama could not stop the passing attack of North Texas. Fortunately for South Alabama, this week they're facing Ohio. Not Ohio State, Ohio, out of the MAC. And they don't throw the football anywhere near the way North Texas does. Also, I look at this South Alabama team. They're going to continue to get better as they get used to their new head coach uh, and what Major Applewhite's offense and defensive schemes are. Uh, I just do not see Ohio being able to trade points with South Alabama. In his first game under his new head coach's uh, regime, quarterback Gio Lopez threw for 432 yards last week and three TDs. Last week, Ohio's defense, who faced Syracuse, who has a new head coach of their own, uh, Kyle McCord threw for 354 yards against them. Uh, this is a spot where I think South Alabama comes in here. They're made the favorite on the road for a reason. Uh, it's going to be a long day for the Ohio defense. I've got South Alabama. I'm going to lay the points. Winning this one, 37-24. Take South Alabama. South Alabama over Ohio. Love that there, Marco, for a best bet this week. Well, we got uh, one more best bet here. We're going to go out west though and i'm gonna take a look at what is pretty much a pick and price right now for what reason i have no idea uh washington state uh taking on texas tech in a game in which texas tech is pretty banged up already with a few guys uh that are definitely out this week uh they've got questions uh including with their top running back uh taj brooks who rushed for 153 yards and a touchdown in what can only be considered one of the luckiest wins 
for Texas Tech against FCS Abilene Christian last week here. This team notoriously not good on the road in any way, shape, or form. However, Washington State kind of an orphan, I guess, right? Not part of the now defunct Pac-12 anymore. Don't know what the hell they are, but I'll tell you this. They looked pretty good last week. Again, again, an FCS opponent, but John Mater, their uh, their quarterback threw for six touchdowns in his first career start there. Listen, whether or not they're in a Pac-12 or alone, they're still 13-5 and five against the number in their last 18 at home. It is a great place to have a game for Washington State. Texas Tech, far too many injuries. I love the home team at a great price on the money line. It's Washington State all day for me over Texas Tech. And there you got it. We got best bets. We've got dogs. We've got double-digit dogs. We got a little something for everyone here in week two of the college football season. Also, I do want to remind you that our good friends over at the Gold Sheet, if you think knowledge is power, and it is, uh, you will have no more knowledge than what you have over at goldsheet.com. And they have got write-ups on all the games, all the trends, all the things that you need to know to make smart handicapping decisions, like, for instance, with Marco, South Alabama, and Ohio game. This is a great write-up with all the information you need. We'd highly encourage you to head over to goldsheet.com, become a member there, and never be without the information you need to make smart sports investing decisions. That'll do it for us here. Make sure you check out the NFL edition of Bet On It, week one in the NFL. That is available. And of course, Hit that like button. Give us the thumbs up. Hit the bell. Come back and join us again next week for another edition of Bet On It College Football. Best of luck.